yeah, you can <clears throat> if you still have no idea about what kind of um, program you can get admitted into, feel free to log in our platform and we have a tiny quiz for you to see which type of program and which level of the like um, intake or stuff you can be available to. So yeah, feel free to visit our platform. And uh, this is a preview of our like <clears throat> platform overview. Uh, you can search the programs according to the type and the subject, and you can also search for university and programs for city on the top. Um, here is some popular recommended online programs. Um, it's like um, this is one very good one offered by BLCU. It's a very famous training university specialized in language teaching. So since it's pandemic time, it's there's like um, online classes available for students all over the world. It don't have to be in China. Or if you're interested in, you can just feel free to log in and have a trial, book a free trial class. We can help you to do that. And the flex, the, and the start date is flexible. You can just register and start your class and learn Chinese. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, from this part is uh, some tips on the <clears throat> document preparation and some inquiry department. So from this part, we will hand in hand over to our very professional uh, admission officer, Celia. And um, yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, on video. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, here on this page, you can see some uh, requirements on each uh, degree program as well as non-degree programs. Um, normally, uh, universities' requirements is like this, but sometimes there are some uh, differences. About this uh, English part, I will uh, give the details on the next page. Now, on this page, uh, here are some documents list uh, for different programs requirements. First, you choose a program on our website, and then you can apply online. Then follow the steps, you can complete the online application, and as well as upload the documents, pay the application fees. The last step is submit the applications. Okay, here are some required documents. I will go over each one of them. Uh, and tell you some tips about how to prepare it. First is passport. Passport, it's better to uh, scan two pages together. Uh, one page is your um, bio page, which uh, has all your information there, your names and birth dates. And another page is the page above it. So when you scan the passport, you need to scan these two, two pages together. And next one is photo. Photo needs to be white background and your face has to be face front. And it's, it has to uh, be from a um, professional photo studio. And third one is graduation certificate. If you already graduate from the school and you should have um, official graduation certificate, um, which with uh, school stamps or principal signature on it. If you are still studying at school, you can ask your school to provide an uh, enrollment letter which indicates the predict graduation date. Of course, with the in, uh, school stamps and the signature. And next one is personal statement. Uh, we often get questions from students about how to prepare the, how to write a personal statement. Well, you can start with following points. Uh, first, you can introduce yourself and you can talk about your background. And then you can explain that why you choose this program or this university to apply. And next one, you can talk about what is your plan in the future? Um, or what do you plan to do after you graduate from university? Okay, about this um, English language certificate. 
there are following points. If you are come from an English speaking country, which your country's official language is English, then you don't need to prepare, you don't need to provide this document. Um, if the second uh, scenario is if your current university or school is taught in English, then you can just ask your school to provide a letter which saying that the program or the class you study is taught in English language. Then this can also work as an English language certificate. The third, um, the third option is if you are um, you are not from an English speaking country and your class is not taught in English, then you need to provide either TOEFL or IELTS or IEP test score as English language certificate. We provide IEP test. Um, you can book with us to complete this test. And this test is recognized by some universities in China. And uh, regarding the HSK certificate, this is uh, required if you are applying for Chinese taught programs. Um, next one, guarantee letter, uh, guarantee letter or bank statement. Uh, the bank statement needs to um, be within two pages, which has the account holder's name and close balance. Uh, two recommendation letters and these letters is very important to have the uh, recommend recommended signature on it and it has to have um, the recommend uh, uh, the phone number as well as the email address from your refers mm. and research proposal uh, if you're applying for master or PhD, it is a necessary document to provide. You can um, write um, the uh, subject you want to uh, study or you want to do the research. Okay. Um, here is a list of additional documents required by universities. Um, since this year, non-criminal record as well as foreign, foreigners physical examination form are very common, um, uh, common to uh, provide when you apply for universities in China. And um, both of these forms have six months valid period. So if you prepare too early, it's not, um, it's not really um, good because um, it will expire uh, by the time you apply for the university. So um, for example, if you apply for uh, September intake 2022, you can start to prepare these two documents around uh, March or April 2022. Parents passport, sometimes university need this document. Um, guardianship letters. Uh, this one is mandatory for students who is under 18 years old. And um, this guardianship letters has to be notarized by the Chinese embassy in your country. Um, recommend letters from teachers. Uh, if you apply for a uh, bachelor degree programs, sometimes uh, the university will ask students to provide recommendation letters from your school. But normally the recommendation letters are required when students apply for master or PhD program. And the last one is your CV. The CV has to be up to date tell the year you apply for university. And it's better to start from your primary school. Some universities is a mandatory required student to provide primary 
uh, provide the education information since primary school. Okay, here we are on the page of how to apply. You can click on this, you can search um, for this website uh, and you can see uh, on the right side of the screen, there are some program type and subject you can choose. And after you click it, you can see all the uh, programs available under this category. Here's a page, for example, here's a page after you, uh, you click bachelor. It's, yeah. Now you can see all the pro bachelor programs provided by uh, different universities in China. This is an example page. If you choose a program to apply, you click here, and all you need to do is click apply now to jump into your application form. On this page, you can start the application by filling out the required information and click create an account. Next step is uh, filling online applications. Every field on this application needs to be filled by you and the information needs to be 100% correct. Now we jump into the stage that you provide all the documents. This is a page when you, uh, when you jump into upload your documents, you can click upload to finalize your documents. Before submit application, you need to pay the application fee. Regarding the application fee, the application fee is required by the university when you apply. And also this application fee will use um, when university prepare your visa documents and mail it to your home address. So this application fee, it's not refundable. Here are some methods you can pay for your application fees. Here's the stage of what will happen to your application after you submit your application. First is we will review your application as well as your documents. If you are missing some documents or information, we will send you an email to remind you to correct information or upload the missing documents on your CA account. After we collect all the information we need, then we will process your application to university. Next stage is we wait for university to give a decision. Um, during this stage, university may require more documents. Uh, we will let you know and keep you updated about it. If you are accepted and you may require to pay the deposit to the university to secure your seat. Uh, normally, after university accepts students, um, they will prepare your visa form, which is GW202 form, and as well as admission notice and mail to your, mail to your address, which you provided on our website. So if you moved, uh, you moved to other place after you submit your application to us, and you need to uh, tell us the new address as soon as possible. The next stage is um, 
you use this GW tool to form as well as your admission notice to apply for a study visa in Chinese embassy in your country and prepare to fly to China and study uh, in Chinese university. But since now border is not open, uh, so universities will only uh, mail the admission notice to you. Sometimes university just provides electronic admission notice to you and the class will be taught online. Here I um, pass the PPT to my colleague, Safa. Uh, thanks, Celia, so much for the detailed explanation. Um, now it's our new I updates and uh, both the COVID as well as admission in 2022. Um, firstly, there's loads of people asking about when can international student come to China. Um, currently, um, as on as big the policy updated in Chinese website. Um, still, international students are not allowed to enter China due to the COVID. Um, and there is not yet official information about when the border will open. So um, people applying for the March intake as well as the fall intake for 2022 is still be expected to be online. So be aware of that. And uh, the second one is when the program starting in like, yeah, will they will be online. <laughs> Uh, and for the international students who are in China right now, um, it depends on which university you're applying to and if the campus is open. Usually they offer on-campus teaching, for example. The university located in Shanghai, Suzhou, Ningbo, and some still, like even if you're China, they still remain online. And for the international students who are not in China, they will provide completely online teaching because the border is still closed for now. And um, hopefully there will be some news soon and we'll be waiting for that. So the next step is gonna be the live Q&A session. Um, <laughs> I see a few attendees right now and um, yeah, anyone have any questions you wanna ask about uh, when, about the document preparation and I will allow you guys to talk feel free to stand up and uh, have your question asked. Yeah, uh, we already prepared some uh, frequent asked questions here. And um, in case you, are, you don't know anything about Chinese universities and how to like regarding information as well, Firstly, when is the intake at universe, Chinese universities? There is like mostly two intakes. One is March intake and the other is September intake. And there is, oh, we have one questions right now. Okay. Uh, how many university can I apply? Usually there is no limits about that. And um, as long as you cover the application fee, which is not that much, um, yes, you can apply whenever you want and how much you want, like you can apply 100 if you feel so, but um, we still suggest you to apply to at least three universities to boost your chance to get accepted. Yes. And um, anything else? I welcome all the like any kind of questions you want to ask because um, we do have loads of different questions have like from students because I'm in charge of the um, like the emails and yes, there's like a lot of questions asked. Uh, um, yes, and uh, waiting for more, while well, I'm waiting for more questions coming in, I'll still like have some questions prepared. So um, this is one for the student who is already in China. Is dormitory available? How can I book it? Usually this kind of, questions is happening during the enrollment stage because by then you will be booking the dormitory and uh, select your selections and dormitory availability depends on the universities like how 
for example, how many people is in one room or the facilities or things like that. Those, those are mostly depending, depending on the universities. And uh, but most of university have dorms for international students separately. And uh, booking is only viewable only after you receive the admission letter and during the enrollment process. So we can help you to book it online. Any more questions coming up, please? <laughs> uh, I already like allow friends to talk. So, like you can just um, like open your microphone and speak with us. It's always welcome. Okay. Uh, here is anonymous attendee having a question. Okay, I'm gonna answer this a lot. Can China admission help student that wants to study in Sichuan or Chengdu? Yes, of course, um, depends on if you were in China or not, like um, there's lots of universities in Sichuan and Chengdu, like for example, Chengdu University, Shan, like Sichuan University, Sichuan Normal University, Chengdu Normal University, it's like endless university, like in those two cities, you can just simply log in our website and type the two cities name and they will have the, the like university locates in that city, like coming up. And you can just apply and uh, talk with us through emails and book a call. It's all welcome. Yes, if you want to study in Sichuan or Chengdu or any cities in China, um, it's doable. You can just contact us. Okay, another anonymous attendee. <laughs> um, hello, ma'am. China did not take hot copies in 2021 CSE scholarship because COVID. 19. Is it necessary to send hard copies in 2022 CSC this time? And the acceptance letter is compulsory in China? Oh, this is um, related to uh, scholarship and I will have like a very professional Celia have this question answer. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. okay, I see the uh, CSC scholarship related questions. Uh, do you mean applying through the embassy or do you mean applying through university? Because CSC uh, scholarship has uh, two types. One is applying through uh, Chinese embassy in different countries and another one is applying through uh, different Chinese universities. Um, for the uh, embassy one, um, there are some embassies require hard copies, uh, which is mandatory to send uh, the mail uh, to them in order for them to process it. But some embassies, uh, the uh, the online, um, if you finish the online applications through CSE website, and they will just check with uh, without uh, need the hard copy documents. Uh, for more details and requirements for this year's um, CSC um, scholarship, and you can check through the Chinese embassies in different countries, the official website. Mm. If you're applying through uh, universities in China, and it's also related, uh, it also depends on university policy. Um, uh, we will only know once the university uh, published their 2022 uh, intake information. Uh, regarding the acceptance letter, if um, I understand that some uh, students, uh, they need this acceptance letter in order for secure their seat on CSA scholarship. Uh, we can help you apply for this letter. Um, so uh, you can book the service on our website and um, mark uh, the notes that um, you need this acceptance letter for uh, secure your seats on CSE scholarship. Uh, any other questions? 
Yes, I hope um, this is because uh, it's a CSC related question. Usually we only give advice um, paid, but hopefully this can solve some of your like curiosity. Um, yes. Um, is there anything else coming up? Um, everyone is talking for this, so just feel free to like open your microphone or something like that. I'm not going to eat you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, I'll be still waiting for a new question coming up while having some prepared ones on set. So usually um, they have some, some university do not have age limits for application, but still for different degrees, they have uh, different requirements. Usually for bachelor degrees, um, it's gonna be between 18 and uh, 30 years old. So like um, if you were on the 18, then you are a teenager, well, according to Chinese policies, you will be needing like guardian letter prepared. And that's very complicated. You can just refer to the information on our website. They have very detailed explanation there. And for master still, you can, the age limit is like extended a little bit uh, to 35 years old and PhD as well to 40 years old. And for non-degree, usually it's the same when you are uh, like teenager, like, not adult, like below 18, but non-degree have an extension of the age requirements to six year old. So you can also ask your grandparents or your parents to join. Oh, we have a new question here, sorry. Um, is there an entrance examination? Oh, that's a very good question because um, this is depending on different universities, different requirements. You, I'm gonna answer this alive, yes. <laughs> um, usually when, after you prepare, all your documents like they're having like university will have your documents reviewed initially after you will have all the documents passed your review there might be trust me there might be a interview going to you but this is not like necessary sometimes if it's like good university for example beijing institute of technology they will be there will be an interview in the beginning and then after past interview, there will be an interesting examination depending on which subject you're applying to. Um, but those are not like um, like a must or anything like that. Some university might not have this extrinsic examination, but um, they will notice you ahead of time. But we do recommend you to prepare a little bit, but usually those examinations is not gonna be super hard. It's just, if you have, finish your high school or study well like in like the education in before was and you will pass this exam it's not going to be super difficult because they're not selecting like a famous academic people it is to secure that you have the basic information and basic knowledge to start your college life yeah so there might be an entrance examination there might be not but we'll let you know Yes, thank you for asking. And uh, oh, if there is a new friend coming up, I will allow you to talk. Uh, I really appreciate your you guys to ask in the Q and A box, but I still really um, encourage you to talk. There, guys, you're all talking permitted. Okay, so back to my question prepared while waiting for you guys to speak up. Um, that's the age introduction. <laughs> so yeah number four i am on the 18 years old what should i do um that was six final head if you are on the 18 years old like that was below the age requirements right so all, all applicants should be above 18 years old like theoretically but if you're on the 18 years old you're a genius you want to study in china um you need to find a guardian but the guardian must be in China. Then the guardian can be Chinese person or a foreigner, but they all have to be living in China with a valid, like if it's a Chinese citizen, then have to be in China. If it's foreigner, then need to have like a valid working permit. And uh, yeah, the student, but if you are you find another student, it can't be your guardian because they have to be holding a valid working permit. Um, yes, so, how much does it, 
how much does it cost to live in China? Um, this is like a general fee structure, like including tuition fee and living cost, like accommodation or food and anything like that, just in general to cover your living expenses and tuition in China. Uh, for degree program and non-degree program is different, but um, the living and cost is not that much, but uh, depends on if you were like a spending person or not. And uh, it can be really depending on different cities as well. Um, number six, can I work and study at the same time? Um, actually, foreign students in China are not allowed to work under your student visa. Um, both part-time and full-time jobs is prohibited. It's like, um, I really have a friend that's trying to like get a secret job, but once they're like discovered by the government or like the local policy and like, you know, the kind of institution that like, you might have a very serious result. It might affect your studies or even just go back to your own country. So, um, uh, but if your university allows you to do that, like for example, you have to do an internship to complete your studies, then yes, it's available, but you should really get your permits from university ahead of time. But you shouldn't do that on your own. Uh, number seven, what are the additional required documents? This is a uh, very already like explained in detail by Celia Alia. And if you have any questions, just email us, feel free. And the next one, how to get a PhD supervisor acceptance letter? Um, yeah, this is also like asked by one of our students, Alia. And um, yes, you can refer to the brief answer. And if you have more questions, just like feel free to email us again yeah we have more friends coming up and feel free to invite your friends or whoever is interested hi is anyone talking uh, <laughs> uh like you can i already like um give you like talking permission like you can have a conversation with us we can answer your question live if you feel it's hard to describe your questions in text yeah feel free to speak up welcome and uh yes i actually through our last online session there is more and more phd students wanting to speak in, like study in china already oh hi juliana i hope i'm reading your name correct um here's your question hello are the provided templates for the application documents this is a very good question um yes but like um, usually there is no like very fixed templates required, um, but for some certain universities, like especially those top universities, for example, Peking University, their business school, or like some uh, schools in Tongji University and other places, they have a required format for your, like especially a recommendation letter and your personal statement they have to be in strict format, like provided by the university. But you don't have to worry if you want to apply through us, like we will let you know when you submit your application. Like for example, um, for the Madriana, you submit your application to BFSU through our website. And yes, BFSU have a certain template, certain format to the, like for their like personal statement as well as the recommendation letter. And before you preparing those, we will let you know that this is required to be a certain format. So you won't be doing like useless work, like it's all gonna be taken care of. And this won't be affecting your um, like application stage and time saved. Yes, this is the privilege with applying through us. And uh, yes, but for most of universities, there won't be such like problem, but it's always better to make it look pretty, isn't it? Yeah, so hopefully this can solve your <laughs> Yes. Um, anyone else speaking up? Is your like, um, you can also ask on behalf of a friend or, you know, still time, we're still ongoing. And um, yes, when is the application deadline? Oh, oops, sorry, this is not updated yet, but um, usually for the March intake, the deadline is like pretty much flexible. And as well as like for the 
September intake, fall intake, you can just have a check on the specific program you have on our website. We have it listed out very clear. Oh, another question. Thank you very much. Thank you for asking. Um, hi, Khan. <laughs> Hope I'm reading your name right. Uh, thanks for a question. Does China Admission Hub to apply for a scholarship like CSC scholarship or university scholarship? Yes, we do, but um, like, we, I didn't, unluckily, I didn't include this information on this um, slides, but yes, we do have CSC scholarship and the university scholarship um, service provided. It's actually two separate. Hold on, I'm gonna answer this like, ah, I can't find my, yes. Um, yes, please. Um, for CSC scholarship, it's a completely brand new process. Like it's gonna be parallel with your whole like simple application process. Like this usually start from the March that you should like in March, you should already like sub submitted your CSC scholarship application. Like if you miss the time, like if you want to submit like after March, it's impossible. And the whole process is gonna be parallel with your normal application process. Um, so yes, this should be very much noted as well as if you are like, for example, the CSC scholarship is like very competitive, lose of very like good student is applying to scholarship as well. But if you are refused with your CSC scholarship application, you won't, even though the other like documents you have past your requirements, you still can't get accepted because like CSC application is like a very different process, a separate um, process other than the normal application process. So what we require, like what we've recommended you is like you can apply a CSC scholarship application as well as a normal application. So even though you are not like accepted or you are re rejected by the CSC application, you still have a chance to get accepted through paid and uh, normal like process or something like that. It's just better than nothing, right? And for the other, the university scholarship, um, this is like a process you need to be take care of after you have the in like you either bef like either before you get the of get the accept like offer letter or after. Like this depends on university. So um, we actually recommend you after you've selected your intended program, you can like send a letter to the university or ask through us. We'll help you to ask the university when will the university scholarship application stages start. So you can get prepared faster and ahead of time. So you won't miss it. Cause usually you sometimes university scholarship, the amount that they are provided is no less than the CSC scholarship. So yes, that's a very good question and a very good chance for the student who have a limited budget to study in China. Yeah, Chinese government and university are like super generous. Hope you can, I hope this solved your question. Okay. No Q&A open right now. Anyone else to have more question up, please? please <laughs> yes okay so yeah um okay this is more question i prepared but i really want you guys to ask question up well i'll i'll be able to get my school diploma after july can i still apply yes this is a oh okay i'll pending my prepare there's a new one coming up okay oh thanks for answering you're welcome you're always like welcome to speak up i want to hear your voice everyone <laughs> yes i will be able to get my school diploma after july can i still apply this is a common question like even though it's like a very i don't know classical one lots of students still ask this up because a lot of friends are like i'm calling my student friends of course um when they start to apply to chinese universities um they are just like not yet graduated from uh, not yet graduated from high school yet. So uh, this time when the university required them to provide a graduation letter, it's not available. But you can always ask your school to provide you a pre-graduation 
letter, like something like, okay, um, Mary is gonna graduate 2022 July, or this is like the pre-graduation certificate where you can be something like you are in school certificate means like I am a, like Mary is a student in like some some high school located okay, like Garden Hill High School from uh, like for example 2020 to 2022. They're still gonna prove that you are graduating by the time the program starts. Okay, there's another question uh, from anonymous attendee. Is it better to use TOEIC or TOEFL? to apply for English top programs. Actually, um, uni usually universities only, they don't have this kind of like um, certain requirements on which kind of English top in English certificate you should have. Um, sometimes it can be TOEFL or IELTS. Those are the classical ones. TOEIC, I never really, uh, we don't usually have those actually. We never saw people submitting that. Um, like you can try, but uh, usually TOEFL and IELTS is like the classical one. And also we have like, due to the pandemic, everyone knows like TOEFL and IELTS are really offline, but due to the pandemic, most of the offline test center is canceled. So we do have a new service called international english test it's already approved by almost like all the university in china it's easy to take is online completed online is cheaper is affordable is way cheaper than toyful ielts or the toyek and um yes it's recognized recognizable as well because um yeah like so far we have like loads of students taking the IIT test and they have already helped them to get into Chinese university already. So especially for the places that have the IELTS and TOEFL Council, feel free to contact us and uh, book the IIT test on our platform. And uh, yes, if you have any more questions, you can always feel free to ask us and uh, yeah. So um, for the English top program, yes, all those certificates is successful, but um, I really suggest you to check with us ahead of time if you want to use our service. It's totally free. <laughs> okay, I hope this answers the questions. Mm -hmm. And also, by the way, for the English top programs, they have a like, basic line, for example, for IELTS, you should be at least 6.5. And for TOEFL, it should be, usually shouldn't be no less than 80 points. And uh, for, for IET, we have a similar scaling structure as IELTS, so it should be also around 6.5, literally no less than six. It's but like the requirements is not like, okay, it just need to be almost like exactly 6.5. Of course, the higher the best, especially when you're applying to good universities such as Tsinghua, Peking University, Fudan, or like Zhejiang. And there is time, like, because there's competition, there's like the higher the score, the better. But usually, the bottom line shouldn't be less than 6.5 in IELTS or IET, or TOEFL, no less than 80. The higher the better, again. Yes. Um, like, we can still submit your application if your like test score isn't qualified. For example, we have one student who wants to apply to Tsinghua University with a 5.5 IELTS. Like, um, we really do um, like reminded her a lot of time to get a higher score, but she wasn't available that time. So we try to submit it and it's like rejected in a minute. So that's like, it's lucky because there's still time for her to resubmit it, like resubmit her application, but usually it's better just to have everything prepared in the first place, right? Okay, so, oh, we have more participants coming up. Yes, you can talk. Please, yes. Yeah, like feel free to ask up or have a chat with us, even without the document preparation. Or is there anything not clear from things ahead? Or you want to see our pretty, pretty admission officer? <laughs> uh, just joking. Okay, so back to the question I prepared. Oh. Oopsie. Yeah. Um, yeah, back to the question I was explaining. So if you are not yet graduated in your high school or like bachelor, where I mean your bachelor degree, you haven't got the certificates yet, 
is always available to ask your university or your high school to give you a pre-graduation certificate or you are like a registered student certificate. There's always something available. They're like pretty much like familiar with that. Just awesome. You'll be fine. And um, yes, the next one, my final transfer isn't released yet. Can I, can I apply? Yes, I, uh, this is usually available because Louisa University, like, especially they are asking you to apply like one year ahead by the time usually no one is graduating that time. So yes, then please submit your current transcript, like whatever you have right now, just give it to us <laughs> or anything like there's anything you have in the moment, like grade 10 to 11 transcript or up to grade 12 or like just for the first semester. And then we can always resubmit it, your like the full transcript. Just you need to have a check of what you have right now. Just have a initial review. So the university will make it sure that you are uh, like qualified or something like that. So there's always a way out. The university is not that bad. Um, okay, what's your comment on China border opening time? Well, this is a very short question. Um, actually. Even though we are dealing with so many applications since the pandemic time, actually, we are not sure because um, this is a completely decision depending on the Chinese government. And actually, we should, I don't I don't know if I'm, if I'm allowed to talk about this question. Um, yes, but um, we don't really know. Like um, we can only give you the what we have or what we know, but this all depends on the Chinese government about the official opening time. But I think the, it's gonna be fine. And also, even though, <clears throat> for example, you are applying for next intake, like for 2022, um, you can just start the first year or first two years online because usually the first year university is gonna be the basic, like foundation class, for example, introduction class or like language class or some kind of like basic for your major um so you can have like the foundation like class taken online and maybe in the future the portal is open you can just have the professional for example you are like experiments in a laboratory like maybe in person no one knows but it's better to prepare than not right okay uh thanks for another question from uh, Zuya Zumaya. I hope I'm pronouncing your question right. Um my name right. Okay. I would like to apply for a master degree, but I still don't get my title. Is it okay to apply only with a graduate diploma? I'm not really sure what you mean by title. Is it something like um your official graduation degree or something like that? Could you please say, explain it a little bit, like the title? Uh, bachelor. We have to, we have to have bachelor in order to apply for master. Ah, I don't know if you can hear this. My that's our Celia talking. Sorry, I'll repeat her. Huh? Um, usually, like the title should be like uh, if you want to apply for masters, you should at least have a bachelor degree, or as I said, pre graduation or pre graduating from bachelor degree. Is that right? Okay, yeah. Confirm by Celia. Yes. So if you want to apply for master degree and you are not yet graduated yet, or you are graduating next year or something, like um, it's possible to ask your university to provide you a pre-graduation like certificate or like register student certificate. Like for example, uh, Zumaya is a registered student in like some some university from 2019 to 2022, then this will be like um, your proof that you are gonna get a title like by the time the program starts. So yes, if you have further questions, like um, you can just um, ask again or speak up, speak up, please. I want to hear your voice. Um, okay. Uh, next one from anonymous attendee is um, Project 211 Matters. Um, like, I don't really know what does Matters mean, like, um, for your future career, or is the level of getting accepted, like, the level of difficulty? Um, I'll just answer both anyways. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, Project 211 was a project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do understand. I'm Chinese. I graduated from Shenyang University. It's both a 211 project and 2985, I guess. Like, it really matters a lot for Chinese students because it's, like, um, it's, like, harder to get in. But usually for international students, it's just going to be a little bit hot, like, the entry requirements is gonna be a little bit higher, but it's not gonna be like super, super strict. It's not that dramatic. Like you have your, usually it should be some, uh, there should be some like um, basic line for your GPA score. For example, um, if you're using the, like it should be above at least above C, like on your grade paper or above 75, right? To a, like to secure your success like i mean just for passing the official review so yes for both 211 project or 985 project like 985 project is better than 211 of course so they will have a relatively stricter requirement for increase so we do if you are still in high school we do recommend you to have a better score and also if you already graduated from high school you are like in like in bachelor still like better your grades that's the first place and then get a like if you are applying to like english or chinese taught get a better language certificate score and things like that okay so hopefully i solved your problem if you have anything i'm just like feel free to speak up it's fine uh next one what do we do to apply for chinese government scholarship and if my gpa is not so good Huh. Um, any like uh, this is a like a CSC related questions, and I mean, like, usually, Celia is just explain. Um, they will have a very strict review on all your documents, like, for from your graduate certificate to your degree paper to all your certificates and grades and stuff like that. So like um, if your GPA is not so good, actually I'm not so positive about it, but in case you're being modest, like you are having like almost 80 and you're saying, oh, I'm not so good. Like I can't guarantee that. But if you want to have a very detailed guideline to our like um, to CSE application, you can book our like consultation service on like our type the website here like it's vip kind of mission box right um hold on <laughs> oh you can just like service you can just email us at our service email address and we will just like send you the uh, consultation link for csc scholarship china admission dot com yes um check the chat box i already sent like the email address you can send the like emails for your increase directly to me i will be answering your emails yes um yeah like if your gpa is not so good i mean i don't know how much you have but csc scholarship application is really super competitive and we do recommend you to get the better degree, better gpa at least to apply for csc or the chance is pretty low and um, yeah, you know, you don't want to waste your time and effort. So yes, I hope this solved your problem. Um, yes, uh, for masters, I don't, I don't really know if for masters. Uh, what's for masters? Yeah, like um, you can speak up actually. Did I give you? Oh, sorry, sorry, Raya didn't give you the talking permits. You can ask live actually. Yeah, where you can just type something in detail about your question. Feel free. Um, yes, okay. Before you give me a detailed description of your question, I'll be keep talking about the question I prepared about. Um, yes, so how much money should be in a bank statement? Can I use my parents' bank statement? Like, this is something very important because, like, the bank statement is not required by us, actually. Like, we are not only treating the rich student of course like we are having free service to all students but the bank statement is required by the university because they need to secure your payment ability 
<laughs> payment ability after like it, and this will like um affect their like decision whether to give you a uh, upper letter or not because they don't want to okay they have limit space every year so every offer letter given out means one state one seat taken out but they don't want the student okay i'm getting offer letter but they can't pay and then the seat is lost it's not yet oh hi raya uh it's okay no worries i want to know about sichuan university i completed my bachelor of dental surgery i want to pursue a master from sichuan yes of course you can you can you can apply that's available like um i remember sichuan have very much good uh, like good like um yeah med medicine also dental like those kind of like medicine related degree uh yes you can apply through our platform and uh, we will review your document and check like if there's anything else needed and for Sichuan usually they will be like Sichuan is good because they will only reject you um like they won't reject you unless you have an interview so you will always have a chance to talk with them oh hello uh someone speaking Mm, yes, it's me. Hi, hi, Raya. Uh, how can I help you? I'm so sorry. Hi. I didn't know that you had uh, uh, let me speak, so I didn't know. So I just wanted to ask the same question. Yeah, I had. Uh, okay. I wanted to. I wanted to apply for Sichuan, and mm -hmm. uh, I didn't. I, I went to their website, but I didn't know if they were open or for the intake. So that is why I wanted uh. to ask. Ah, so uh, which intake you're applying to, like for September or March? Uh, maybe um, 2022, uh, it's for 2022, yeah, March 2022. or September, I don't mind either. Ah, uh, you just want to go, right? Um, yes, because uh, due to pandemic, Louisa University already changed their timeline for intake. So yes, I already have like our um, email address, type in the chat box, you can email us and uh, I will reply. And I will reply you after I check, yeah. like the exact because, timeline uh, detail. I, mm -hmm. I I even contacted uh, the China admissions, like you guys, uh -huh. and uh, yeah, I got an email, and they were, they told me that they would let me know, but I haven't yet got an email back. So I just wanted to know if it was. Uh, or yeah, yeah, I see. Um, uh, we will like um. Thank you for asking again. Thank you for participating in this event. And um, okay. yes, I will just uh, after this event, I will send one to you for sure. Like, thank you so much. You have my guarantee. I couldn't no, find right. the email, uh, the one you said I couldn't see in oh. the chat box. No worries. Hold on, I'll send again. Yeah, maybe you just uh, huh. how you send panelists? Oh, should be to everyone. My apologies. Okay, uh, <laughs> can <laughs> yeah, thank I can you. send it to you. No worries. We will have actually they will be holding this kind of events like at least every week. Different um different topic will be released about um like for example, some people are interested what you can do after graduating from China, for example, internship opportunities or career opportunities where you you will want to start your own business in China. That's also possible, that's always possible. Like we will have those kind of like next time we might um we are planning to invite one of a very one of our uh, like um internship platform to like introduce your possibility after graduating in china uh oh uh, for the email address i already sent it in the chat box let's service china admissions.com you can send it here admissions i hope that i'm spelling it right and my wechat um hold on let me check uh, usually we don't really provide like WeChat service because like it's too messy and sometimes we miss out. So you can always send like it's also like hard to keep a record like about our previous conversation in WeChat platform. So you can always send emails to this address service chinaadmissions.com and um, yes we will have your like conversation history record recorded and also it's good for communication in the, in the future hope you understand like this is yeah. yeah no worries uh, okay <laughs> okay um yes i think um 
Okay. Uh, anyone else with questions? You can always speak up, you know. Um, yes, my there's like a few others ones left. I don't have much questions prepared, just to be honest. Uh, how much money should the bank? Yeah, I'll come back to this bank statement problem. Uh, yes, usually you can use your parents' bank statement if you are a batch, like if you are like supported by your parents, or you can use your own. I think you can use your own usually if you are self-funded. Like some students already like saving a lot of money and want to study in China on their own without their parents. It's always available. Like there should be at least one year expenses of studying in Chinese universities. And um, yes, it should be like about like, you can check different university with different like, um, like tuition fees, but usually it's should be like covered the first year at least. Okay, can I apply later or oh, after deadline? Like, no, not everywhere. <laughs> like, like someone is like always asking like if we can like submit later than deadlines. There's like different deadlines for different programs. If, for example, for each Hong Kong university, like um, they have different phases and different timelines and they do have different deadlines. So, but we do recommend you to submit as early as possible because it might be voting intake. So you have more privilege if you like go faster, you know, secure your seats or something like that. And uh, yeah, how long is the application process? This is very, very, very important. Like, I don't know, you guys have had uh, like, um, maybe you're not, just like um, vaccinated. Like Chinese university reply super slow. Um, can't guarantee like when they will give a reply, but uh, if you're using our platform, our privileges is we have close connections with most of universities you're applying to. And because uh, we are like, we're based in Beijing, in China, like um, we can always call them and have an update. So yes, uh, even if they reply slow, we can still push them. But usually their reply is like super slow even we push them. So understand if you are applying with yourself or with us, like it takes time, be patient. Thank you very much. And the last one, can I study on campus? Oh yeah, this is the time need to be updated. Like for 2022, September intake is about to open up. Again, it's not guaranteed, but we will wait and see. And um, yes, that's all my question prepared today. I hope you guys have a good time with us. And this is again, the international language test introduced. It's Recon, rec, like recognized by most, of, like almost all the universities in China. We haven't really encountered a case that doesn't yet. So like um, also with online tests, you don't have to be worried about Corona. You don't have to like get the seats. Like, you know, every time when I was open their application, everyone's like rushing to their website and get the seat. But you don't have to do it here. We are like online and we don't have to like, you know, to be that crowded. And it's affordable, it's cheaper. And also, if you want to apply to China, it's like a good choice. Yes. Like, feel free to ask like, more questions if you have, like, about um, IET or anything like that. Why China admissions? Again, oh, questions. Also, I want to know what's the minimum HSK required for masters. Oh, uh, HSK is um, required when you were applying to Chinese taught programs. And usually it should be like around four or five. Like, oh, for masters, masters should be like five or at least like, at least five or six. Cause master teaching is like very much depending on your communication with the professors and your tutors. So if you don't have a good Chinese foundation or stuff like that, like even though you got admitted, it's gonna be hard for you to finish your studies. So, if you don't have a good Chinese foundation, you can always apply for English top program. I think they are available in Central University. They have, like, in China, there's, like, lots of programs offered in English. So, yeah, even though you don't have HSK or you want to study Chinese, you can always study, like, after you come to China. And, yeah, again, we do have the online, like, um, online English Chinese course. And you can always book it and um, register online. And um, it's provided by BLCU. It's a very good Chinese university again. I don't know if you heard of it. Yes. So this is answered as well. 
Um, yes, for why you choose us, why you choose Chinese physicians, plus if you're free of charge, like um, the money you should be paid for the application fee is not to us, is to the university. Because like, even if you apply to university in States or anything like that, and you can, like, you should always pay like a certain amount of fee that for the university to process your documents. But um, you can, like for us, for the service, for the follow up, for document checking, for like all the after services, it's all free of charge. We don't charge any service fee to help you apply. It's 100% 100 free. Like, cause um, we're not like doing charities. We are like founded by universities. So from the student side, we are just trying to make the process and experience as best as possible. So the only thing you need to be paid is like the application fee. And uh, secondly, is one platform for all. Like you can search and apply for multiple programs on our platform. Like it's not only like almost all the programs on in China in all Chinese universities with that exact timeline, tuition fee, and all the requirements needed. Sometimes it's even like more like well rounded than Chinese platform. You can have a check. Like we have a very like established platform, and also we are responsive. We are reachable anytime. You can book a call. You can join our webinars. And you can also like ask us through email. We'll reply you within one work day. Yes. Um, yeah, like, and there's also loads of other questions you can choose us. Don't have to hesitate. Just click our website. And yes, we do have the final introduction about the services we have. Like, uh, we are free for application. We are free of services, but if you want something more, you want like more well-rounded or premium or Excel or elite world class services, you can always like buy our packages. There's like one fast track application package. You can like, for example, you already apply through like yourself, but you don't get any response from university where it's hard for you to reach out to universities. You can always buy the package for fast track application and you send us your application number and all your like information needed sometimes maybe like another like authorization form to us so from then we can help handle your tracking service like give you an update and your results and everything like that and uh yes we have already updated another uh service we have is like um it's also fast track service but it's for free that should be before you make the application like for example some student they don't want to use agencies i do understand that it's okay but uh, you still want to get the response as fast as possible or want to reach out to universities because you are not available in china or not available to reach it like you can always um okay when you submit application on the university like um website or portal there's one recommendation agency or at recommendation organization you should print in china admission name and give us a screenshot along with your application status and numbers and information send it to us then we will also do the fast track application for you without paying the fee but yes you should um you need to type in our name to the recommend organization and send a screenshot to us only with that we can do the fast track application for you for free and then there is like a guarantee service um you can get your personal advisor who has already studied in china before uh, i don't know if you have joined our previous online webinar like q a uh our very personal advisor nadia she's like an expert in studying china she will be your personal advisor. And also they will give you some uh, very premium personal choices to three universities, to make sure that those programs are suitable for you and you're interested in and available. And then we have um, free review of documents. You can send you our documents and we will help you to check and make everything perfect. And also it includes when you come to China, accommodation booking and application fees. You don't have to pay anymore because you already pay for us and including rejection insurances like because we give you that like we can give you the recommendation and if it is rejected we'll have some insurance for you 
and also the free fast, fast track application and communication and body introduction, as well as communication support by email or chat or book a call with us free of time. Um, yes, that's our services. Uh, anyone have any problem uh, or questions regarding the service? Uh, if, like, um, if you want to know more about it, just book a call with our advisor Nadia through vipchinamission.com. There is, uh, I can type in the chat box as well, like for, and you mean, like you want to know more about the services we have, or you want to know about, about what kind of things we can provide for you, you can always put the call and um, yeah, know more about it. I will type it in the chat box. Dot com, I hope I'm spelling it right. Yeah, that's the website you can book the call with us. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, yeah, so that's going to be the end of our session. I hope you guys enjoy the time you're having with us today. Uh, if you want to search for more programs, for example, Araya is interested in China, like China University or anything else, you can just search on our platform and or email us to apply china.com or service.com or fine. And we are still, we are also on multiple platforms. We are on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and um, Twitter, as well as YouTube. We upload and renewed YouTube videos almost every week and we have different contents you are interested in. And also we have like the official account on WeChat. We post um, daily updates as well or different part, like blog passages. Yeah, you can have a screenshot of the information if you're interested in. So yes, thanks again for joining our um, like events today um sorry if like um there is question unanswered but you can always email us again and uh just news alert we are gonna hold more and more this kind of online webinars it's really q a events and have different guest speakers invited like different times last time i don't know if you have joined last time is our like app like recruitment manager nadia this time is our application manager, Celia. They're all like expert at this field. They have done this for like literally years and uh, you can always feel free to ask us more if you're interested in. Oh, oh no worries. I deeply appreciate your speaking up. <laughs> yeah, so, and each time, hopefully I'll be the host. If you wanna see me again, you can also pay attention to our website and uh, other, I will also send you emails if you're interested in. So next time, um, hopefully it's gonna be another webinar and q and session about internships in China and around the world. We'll invite like a speaker about um, like about online internship and offline internship around the world. And if you are interested, pay attention to our website. We'll give you like, we'll update the exact time and dates and contents on it. So yes, that's gonna be another take. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining. And um, yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> okay, how to end it? Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank yeah. you. You're in no worries. <laughs>